Hello and welcome to IABM TV. I'm Lorenzo Zanni, Head of Insight and Analysis at the IABM. Today we're going to have a look at uh, trends uh, in Manage. So uh, we are joined by uh, Ted Corte, who is CTO at Lilligent, um, Lior Berdyski, Director of Pre-Sales Engineering at Prime Focus Technologies, and Sam Bogosh, CEO of Axel AI. So let me start from a very general, from you, Ted, from very general uh, questions to see how you see the market in manage. Uh, what are, in your opinion, and from your company's perspective, the main drivers of change in content management and manage in more general? I, I think the main driver in change is really speed. Uh, we're, we're living in an, an era of infinite media, so there's, there's this big hunger, thirst for creating um, derivations of the same content, new content, um, more personalized content, and it's, it's all about speed from our perspective. Uh, that's the big thing. They know how to do their job, they just need to know how to do it faster and, and better. Yeah, yeah. that's for that. Leo? I will support that and I'll add to that a, a bit, uh, a few things. In my opinion, it's cost, streamlining, and efficiency. Yeah. That's what everybody's looking at, at to do today. To Let's duplicate the work uh, and get things to the market as fast as they can with less effort. Yeah. Sam? Um, I, ha I have to the second or third one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. No, I would say we, we probably have a, a slight shift in emphasis. We're very focused on cost yeah. because some of these new technologies that are coming in, like AI, uh, are really only viable if you have a large amount of footage if the cost is viable. So definitely cost for our customers and also ease of implementation. It's like if they can't start doing it, and you have to remember that many of these folks yeah. are freelancers, if they can just wander up to their machine and start doing it, then you've got a problem because you have a learning curve and so forth. So cost and ease of, of implementation. Yeah, ease of implementation. Yeah. yeah, and content management is very, we, we find that that is very important. It's the art of uh, the new media factory is driving efficiency throughout the content change. And you mentioned AI, which is a big trend from our perspective as well. Definitely. How do you see AI in, the, in this part of the, of the industry? So at the moment, it's just in its infancy. Yeah. Um, you know, I would say maybe 1% of the people here at NAB uh, have, have any real uh, first-hand experience with AI, but that's going to change very rapidly over the next few years because the technologies are, are really viable today. Yeah. You know, the stuff actually is starting to work. Uh, it's not perfect. You know, of course, everyone imagines that it's going to be like instant transcription perfectly of every language and perfect facial recognition, and of course, the reality isn't quite there yet. But at the price points that are actually available, you can do a lot. And as long as you have human beings in the loop, you know, human in the loop AI, then you can filter out the stuff that's noise. So we think it's, it's already extremely powerful and that uh, over the next few years, you'll see 20 and then 40 and then 60% of the people actually being able to benefit uh, yeah. from AI in their work. Leo, what's uh, your prime focus view on AI? Um, very supportive of what uh, yeah. Sam just said. Um, the only thing I would add to that is that w I think one of the challenges that uh, we all are facing now is how to take this information that um, AI surfaces up and actually make it contextual, yeah. accurate, and actionable, which is the key for every, uh, every uh, element of, of, of this particular discussion. Because if you just get that information, there's nothing you can do with it. Yeah. You just wasted money and you wasted time. So the way to make it contextual, actionable, and accurate is the goal. And that's the goal of our, our company and what, that's our pursuit. So the business outcome is very important. Important, that, creative understanding. outcome, business outcome. Yeah. Again, AI will help us in everything, even our, our personal life in the future. It's something that yeah. will change our life completely. Of course, it will also affect our industry, the M&E industry. Yeah. Ted, I know you've got a... Uh, yeah, just, just to add to it, I think we're all kind of... The good thing is that <laughs> <laughs> we all kind of see the same kind of problems Absolutely. and trends. Um, the only thing I'd really add to it is um, AI from a learning uh, perspective. Uh, right now, there's, there's different kind of workflows. Workflows need to be very dynamic. Uh, they need to change based on the types of situation. And there's no systematic way to say, okay, what did we learn from yesterday and how can we apply it to today? So I think across the entire managed uh, ecosystem, um, the ability to have AI um, kind of learn from your past and further improve operational efficiencies going forward is, is another trend that I'd like to see. A little far away from that based on kind of people still complaining about silos and those kind of things, but uh, I think that's where they're going to need to get to to get to that overall 
efficiency, cost reduction, and speed that we talked about. Yeah, and we say that media companies are increasingly focusing on this, on data, analytics, uh, AI, but how are they dealing with uh, uh, also gathering data, of course, on uh, as they go direct to consumer, uh, on different uh, things like operations, but also audiences. How, uh, how are they dealing with that in terms of uh, data uh, issues? How do you see that? Are they? Yeah, well, yeah, that, that gets a lot broader than, than just manage, yeah. and I know you, you're uh, tracking that as well. But yeah, metadata is absolutely yeah. important, and a lot of people are, you know, they really want to see metadata kind of follow the media through the entire ecosystem yeah. from cradle to grave, <laughs> and everyone supplement to it. And you get everything about the content with how many times it was played, how many times it was cut, edited, you know, where it was done, and all these other kind of things to kind of build up to it. And then, you know, the intelligence systems in the background can also understand, oh, this is popular content. This is the kind of feedback that we got from an audience based yeah. on this content and make those derivations. So um, an example is we, we do, you know, last mile and end user kind of data analytics as well. So pulling that back in there, that's the feedback loop that you'd like yeah. to close, right? Um, so that's all very powerful to, yeah. to be able to do that. So an increasingly integrated this supply chain as well. Uh, what's your view on it, Leo? Um, I, I will just add to that that <coughs> I think uh, one of the uh, ch challenges and all, all, uh, all endeavors that at least our company is working on is to try to figure out what to do with that data. And as 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 uh, as, uh, as we just said, data comes from everywhere. It will come from your media. It will come from your analytics. It will come from statistics that you generate through the process. Yeah. And it's a lot. And you need to figure out how to actually present it properly. So the UX and UI of all of those elements is very key because you can, again, just put the data somewhere and people will have to figure out what to do with it. Yeah. But again, making it uh, uh, pointed to the actual uh, action that you actually can take out of that, that's the, that's the key. Uh, Sam? Well, I'm also, by the way, I'm struck that we sat down in this, in this particular yeah. order because we're kind of at the capture end of things. Like our software is actually not that ambitious. Our job is really to help people search all the raw media that they've captured. Yeah. But we don't get that deep into the post-production. And of course, that's where you come in. You handle it all the way through, you know, through finished product, really. And then you're more, more of the downstream. The zone, yeah. So, you know, we, we could have sat in any order. I think, <laughs> well, no I think he planned that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, but we didn't have labeled seats or anything. So, so you want to switch? No, no, so yeah, I'm good, I'm good. Uh, so, you know, our, our mission is a little bit more narrowly defined. Because, yeah. again, our customers, typically they go out and they shoot a bunch of stuff, whether it's on Canon or Sony or RED, and they just accumulate a lot of footage. Initially, on just loose hard drives. Yeah. Then they want to consolidate it to shared storage, but at no point are they really able to search it. And, and so we have this very highly focused mission in just helping them solve that one problem. But really, that's just the beginning of, of the food chain here, and there's, there's a lot of steps going back from there. So uh, I think there are probably challenges and opportunities at, at every step of that flow. Yeah, and uh, with AI, of course, we're seeing increasing interest in the cloud as well. Uh, yes. How do you see, uh, and sometimes they, they go uh, hand in hand, of, uh, of course, and how do you see the, the adoption of the cloud in, in content management and manage? Well, right now, the, I think the cloud is strongest um, the closer you get to distribution. Yeah. Because it's a no-brainer, let's say you have a finished master and you need to output 75 versions of it. It makes no sense to transcode those all locally. I mean, there are cases when you do that, but it, it clearly would make sense to upload it once and then have that final transcode yeah. done in the cloud. So that's where you see people like Elemental and so forth uh, getting so strong. Um, on the capture side, it's a little difficult because they're capturing often in very high resolutions, even higher than they intend to broadcast. So, you know, 6K, 8K, and yeah. uh, eventually larger. And so generally that still goes to a local hard drive as the first step. Um, and to the extent that the cloud is involved, it's often like uh, FedEx <laughs> flying it somewhere through physical clouds. Uh, not so much that they can actually um, transport that kind of uh, raw media. Um, once they, they start to narrow down what they're going to use, then I think the cloud has, has a huge role, obviously, and, and you're seeing that at Rockwell. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, absolutely. Like, first of all, in regard to adoption, like, um, I've, I've seen a lot of uh, uh, pushback against adopting the cloud 
because of cost, speed, and, and security. Yeah. Know, people uh, don't want to put the content somewhere that they can't put their hands on, yeah. uh, afraid of the cost and uh, repercussions of getting content back from it. And speed, uh, I want my content to be next to me, near line, so I can actually do, and so do something with yeah. it. S but the interesting thing that I, I noticed in my last you know, 10 years in this industry is that big players now will move those petabytes and petabytes of data to those clouds. And additionally to that, if you really look at it, before you didn't have options. Yeah. Today you have other players giving you those services. Yeah. You have Google, you have Microsoft, you have uh, AWS, so now you have options. So people have more uh, the flexibility of not getting to that vendor locking that everybody's afraid of. Yeah. So that, that opens the doors and really seeing those big players going up is, is, uh, is something that encouraging us to move forward. Yeah, interesting point that you make about security as well because this is the second time I hear that today oh about yeah. the cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Even if uh, despite the level of investment, of course, of cloud service providers and insecurity is still uh, a concern. For it's a, a it's what you used to. Everybody had their content next to them. So now yeah. you're telling them, move, them some, move it somewhere else. Who's, make, who's making sure that my content is there? Who's making sure that nobody will take my content or it's safe or no corruption? Dan? Yeah, uh, no disagreement with that. The, uh, the only thing I would probably add to it is we also see a mix of um, cloud adoption. So with respect to you know, the, the uncertainty, the insecurity, and then you know, probably my least favorite thing is a lot of people just want to take what they do today and the same way they operate today it doesn't work. and just move it to the cloud. And it becomes a big disappointment because it's not ch cheaper, faster, mm -hmm. better. You don't get the benefits. No, unfortunately, yeah. it's, it's, it's a bigger risk. But if you fundamentally change how you work, and it also is an opportunity to break down some of those data silos and some of the other things that you have. So it's a great opportunity to like move to the, f to the cloud, but then um, break your workflows up into the smallest pieces you possibly can. So think completely different, chop it up in as many different pieces, yeah. and then it'll, it'll seem so much better and you'll actually get the benefit of the cloud. So and then it'll take off, actually. Now that you mentioned that, uh, let me ask you about microservices as well. Yeah. How do you see them uh, in, in Manage? Um, yeah, we're a fan of microservices. We actually do have um, you know, microservice deployments. Um, so it could be a good thing and it could be a bad thing. And uh, it could be a bad thing yeah. because it gives gives vendors an opportunity to do what they do best. You know, their best in breed component, and they can virtualize it, make it available to the cloud, and it has the the promise of that, and also the promise of um, breaking down that monolithic thing. Yeah. But then the whole converse is also true. So if everybody shows up with microservices, then you need some kind of orchestration on top of all those microservices, and then you're back to the monolithic thing, yeah. and then you get, instead of an ecosystem, you get an ego system where everybody <laughs> wants to be the center of the universe, <laughs> right? Which is not what anybody really wants. And then if you talk about you know peer-to-peer, -peer, that's gonna require heavy interop and standardization. So yeah. there's definite pros and cons. I think we're a ways out before that takes off unless, unless the industry really comes together on how to approach yeah, that. Yeah, lots of work to be done. Here? Um, my take on microservices, first of all, and just to define it, in my opinion, it's a new architecture in technology, right? Yeah. It's a new way to look at how you can actually build your product. And for companies that build the product before, uh, it's a matter of how, how you look at your product as is today and, in, and, and then decide where do you actually want to take your product in respect to how do I chunk it to now actually respect those microservices. Yeah. Where it makes sense and where it doesn't make sense. You, know, you need to look at the benefits of microservices. The, the idea is that you can scale. You can throw at them a lot of things and they perform that thing. And the additional benefit of microservices is that from a, from a code management, it's supposed to be a solution for you to focus on that particular task that you want to do, that microservice will do that particular task. Yeah. So looking at your, uh, uh, if, you're an, if you're a company that was uh, uh, previously uh, 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 architectured differently, yeah. look at your product, decide how you want to take that product and evolve it to microservice, or even if you're a new company, how do you adapt it and how you actually make it work properly. Yeah. Thanks for that. Sam, do you want to add this? Yeah, so from our point of view, and again, we're a little more grassroots, aimed more at uh, not only point of capture, but the small and mid-sized teams that manage yeah. with, uh, what, ha what happens there. Uh, we've actually thought it's important enough to develop a, a point product called Connector yeah. that is essentially a series of modules that are capable of managing microservices. So you can call up a transcoder or an FTP or an Aspera. You can even send somebody an SMS or you know call a script, 
And uh, this idea uh, that you could have a thin layer, and hopefully not, not too big an ego, uh, have a, a thin layer that would allow you to coordinate these things without having to be a coder, but instead be kind of graphical modules on screen, we really think that's the future. And we've been careful to do it in a very vendor independent way so that hopefully we can get, uh, we already have like seven or eight vendors on board, but we'd love to have 70 or 80. And I think, uh, you know, for many of the creative folks in this industry that may not be coders, but want to leverage microservices, um, something like Connector is in fact uh, an interesting way forward. Yeah, yeah. Another trend we're seeing in Manage is uh, DIY, so the increasing propensity of media companies to build stuff, uh, build technology by, by themselves. And I wanted to ask you about that because Manage, of course, is a strategic part of the content chain, driving, as I said before, driving efficiency uh, throughout uh, um, the organization. Uh, how do you see DIY and uh, co uh, media companies building uh, technology by themselves? Yeah, I, I, I think what we're hearing <coughs> when, when people are saying uh, BIY, <coughs> build it themselves, do it themselves, is the fact that no single vendor has everything that they need. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's pretty obvious. And um, no one can get there quick enough on their own. They can't wait for it to come up as a product, right? Everyone has unique needs, unique workflows, unique everything. So we're not in any kind of point of maturity in the industry because there's so many new technologies and so many different needs to go fast that they need to basically customize it. And yeah. we're starting to embrace that and we show up with technology components like things that are containerized, microservices, you know, those yeah. kinds of things show up and say, this is where our expertise lies. This is the kind of components, building blocks that we might have. Who do we work with to satisfy what you need? So we're starting to embrace it. Yeah, yeah. So because sometimes uh, customers want to build something on top of your solution as well. But Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Just to touch on the first point, first of all, I see it as an opportunity yeah. to help That's extend yeah. functionality. You can do your homegrown system and you can develop what you want to do for, for your particular business, but it's hard for you to cover the full spectrum. So I see it as an opportunity to go and help those companies to actually extend that functionality and actually give them more. Find those white pockets where they need to actually to be uh, extended to. Yeah. So it's, it's a change in the relationships Absolutely. With, uh, with your customer. More collaboration as well, Sam? Yeah, and I, and I would also say the, the whole DIY, DIY trend we see it most strongly with the really large, you know, the Netflix, the, large the YouTube, yeah. the, the Amazon <laughs> Studios of the world. Um, once you get below that, uh, like even the large broadcasters, they're still very reluctant to do anything in-house uh, yeah. that's beyond an integration project. Because, you know, and that's really where Prime Focus, for instance, comes in. They need more technology than they can reasonably get their arms around. Yeah. And many of them have had efforts in the last few years. You know, I'm reminded of that BBC NAM project from yeah. about a decade ago, where they went out and spent, I think, 120 million dollars or pounds. It was just insane, and it, it kind of collapsed in its own way. Uh, there, there have been other examples like that, but I think they've been sort of cautionary for the industry, to where people say, you know what, um, I, I want best of breed vendors, and then I, I want to, I want to essentially coordinate those and customize where I need to. But I, I don't see a lot of appetite outside of the Netflixes uh, to go in there and, and just yeah, total build. Custom. So yeah. depends total on custom. size. Depends it's on scary. size as well. It gets pretty scary. Yeah. Even for the vendors, it's scary enough. You know, but for for a customer who might have uh, four or five engineers to try it is, is um, a lot. Yeah, interesting point you make. Um, last question for all of you. And I'm, I'm coming back to the general, away from the specific. What's coming back uh, next in content management? Uh, and what's your company planning for for the future in terms of long-term future as well? So for us, uh, we really see the increasing numbers of teams that are struggling with these issues and, and are putting out great content uh, as the biggest single data point. It's yeah. probably about a quarter million teams worldwide doing this type of work. That is very likely to hit a half million teams in the next few years. And so our mission is to reach as many of those teams and, and provide useful tools to them as possible. Uh, it, so it's, it's kind of the broad base of the pyramid, and, and that's just our focus as a company. Yeah. But we think that broad base is also the most interesting place, because it's where the YouTubers are, it's where the, the churches and the venues and the corporate video people are. And they may not be making Netflix quality movies, uh, but they're making a lot of stuff, and they're, and they're just accumulating and trying to manage content on the social media 
in very tight time frames. So that's that's our focus. But again, we focus on it because we see the growth. Yeah, because video is increasing and being being used in all the industry. Everywhere. Uh, as, yeah. a, as a means of Everywhere. Yeah. Exactly. Everybody makes video. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Yes. But from from our perspective, we of course focus on more the, more of more things than I would just articulate now. But centralization is very important for for yeah. us. Artificial intelligence, like we all talked about, yeah. is, is going to be and of course collaboration. Yeah. So creating tools for those three things in, uh, is is a mission from prime fo for prime focus technologies. Yeah. Yeah. So collaboration also to increase productivity. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. As well. Ed? Yeah. Uh, same kind of thing. You know, we want to be a valuable component to any kind of ecosystem. Yeah. Uh, not ego, uh, ecosystem. Like ecosystem. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very much. Well, yeah, uh, I think we all experience that one way or another. Yeah. Especially when you try to talk to people and collaborate, and you're like, okay, yes, as long as I'm the center of the universe. Yeah. Uh, but no, we we, we, we hope to, we understand our, our place, and we hope others understand their place as well. And we want to provide you know the valuable feedback because uh, that's another area that we uh, specialize in is last mile end user to bring that information yeah. back. Add it to your data. Add it to your data, and help you, you know, help them produce world-class content faster and better than than ever. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, all, for the interesting uh, insights. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Uh, for more information, uh, please visit the IBM website. Thank you. Thank you.